You're listening to the Secure Dad Podcast. Discover ways to secure your home, protect your family, and embrace your role as a protector parent. Welcome, friend. I'm Andy Murphy, the creator of the Secure Dad. This podcast serves to help families become proactive in their safety. The information I share on this podcast is for general information purposes only. My goal is to empower you to make safer decisions for yourself and your family. Today, we're talking about going on vacation. I just got back from a trip and it was a lot of fun, but there are some things we as protector parents need to know so that everyone can have a good, safe time. I'll share with you some easy tips to make vacation security easy, plus there's a bonus episode of the podcast all about how you can secure your home while you're away on your trip. All of that and more ahead on the Secure Dad Podcast. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know, it would be really nice if Andy could just stop by my house and look it over to make sure that it was secure as possible? Unfortunately, I can't do that for everybody, but I've done the next best thing. I've created the Secure Dad Family Home Security Assessment. This assessment will empower you to take control of your home security and protect your family. This works by showing you actionable steps that you can take to upgrade the security of your home. This 12-page checklist shares tons of great information on how to protect the exterior and interior of your home, keep your car safe in your driveway, maximize your alarm system, and a lot more. I've designed this specifically for protector parents of all skill levels, and again, if I can do it, you can do it. You can get your copy of the assessment today for only $6, so for the price of a fancy coffee, 6 bucks, you can secure your home today and well into the future. If you've read my book on home security, there is some crossover, but this assessment will show you much more of the details that you need to protect your home. The book and the assessment work really well together. I designed it that way. You can download the Secure Dad Family Home Security Assessment for only $6 today at the link in today's show notes. Vacations are important for families. They can be a spur-of-the-moment event, or they could take two years to plan. No matter where we go, how much fun we want, we need to ensure that we're safe on our vacation. I'll remind you that security is the foundation of happiness, and this is true for travel as well. If we don't feel safe, or we don't feel like we have a plan, even a trip to paradise can be uneasy. So let's go over some straightforward vacation security tips. Most of us just don't pick a random destination and then just take our families there. We research where we're going, but not only do we need to research the destination, we also need to know about the area where your family is going to be staying. And you can pick out some awesome Airbnb, but if it's in the middle of a war zone, it's not going to be a good time. So when you're looking for a place to stay, make sure you know what that area is like. One of my favorite websites is the LexisNexis Community Crime Map. And you can find that at communitycrimemap.com. Here you can search for free where you'll be staying in the U.S. to see crimes that have been documented in that area. They populate on a map so you can kind of see what's going on in certain areas and what the trends are. Now, not every community is listed, but there's a good chance that tourist destinations are going to be on that map. So you can sign up for crime alerts for that area too. Also online, you can stalk the local news sites to see what types of crimes are happening in that city. While shoplifting, car break-ins, and drug possessions are everywhere, look for things like murder, arson, anything that looks like a crime spree that may affect your vacation plans. That also includes now rioting. That's something that we have to look out for. And it never hurts to talk to someone who lives there. Tap into your local personal network with residents of that area or people who've traveled there recently. If you don't know anybody that's been there, then I suggest you call the non-emergency phone number for the local police department. Ask to talk to somebody who can give you a few minutes and give you the lay of the land and tell them where you're going to be staying and what you're going to be doing. This way you can get first-hand information from law enforcement about what they're seeing and what you want to do so you know that everything meshes. When you find out where you're going to be staying, I want you to do a little bit more research. Know where the nearest hospital and urgent care centers are. I went on one ill-fated beach trip where two people had to go to two different medical facilities. It was not a great time. But if you know where to go and how long it takes to get there, you'll make better decisions under pressure. 
Yeah, you can Google a place when somebody gets hurt, but the speed at which you can get moving will not only help the response, but it'll bring reassurance in a crisis. Of course, when we travel, we want to brag about it. That's what social media is about, right? It's no fun to go on a trip and not share 75 pictures a day that fully documents your trip. No, really, I have friends on Facebook that do this. I get a play-by-play of their trip to Disney. While it's fun to bring our friends and family in on our joy, we can't trust social media with this information in real time. If everybody knows that you're in Florida, then the average person can deduce that your home is empty and all of your possessions are vulnerable. To avoid this, Don't post your vacation pictures when you're away. Save them for when you get back home. This is called lag posting. Don't give the bad guys the upper hand where they know that your home is empty. Don't forget to listen to the bonus episode where I share with you how to secure your home while you're on vacation. If you absolutely must share your photos with somebody, text pictures to trusted friends and family. This way you get the joy of sharing, and they get to experience your trip all in a private setting. And this leads me to my next point. Update your family on where you are frequently, and this is especially true for when you travel to another country. Let trusted friends and family know where you're going to be, and they can help you if something goes wrong. This is where texting them pictures can help. They'll know where you were and roughly the time of day that you were there. Share your hotel address and your itinerary too. The more information that they have, the quicker they can get help your way if something goes wrong. Plus, if you stop sharing, they'll know that something is up and they can get people looking for you. When we travel, we need to do our best not to look like tourists. And that's hard depending on where you go. Don't wear clothes that identify us as belonging to a certain area. I have what I call driving shirts. Now, these are specific shirts that I wear when we're on the road on vacation. They're neutral with no names or graphics, or they're just simple brands like Columbia or Adidas, something that can be found anywhere. This way, when we stop at a gas station, I don't stick out as not being from the area. Shirts with your company logo, your college, your kid's school can identify you as new to the area. And you don't want to do this because you're going to give scammers an edge. People who know you're not familiar with the area will exploit that to con you, or worse, rob you. Lastly, don't assume that every place you go is going to accept a credit card. Carry some cash with you for emergencies, or if you end up at that great local restaurant, that's cash only. On our last trip, we ended up at a fish market that was right on the dock. It was surrounded by old boats, broken down cars and trailers. It was quite a spot for a suburban family to end up. My son got quite a lesson that day. But the mahi that we got was great, but we had to pay in cash. So don't put yourself at odds with people literally in the boondocks who can store your body on ice and then dump it in the ocean. Just a tip there. So have fun. On your trip this summer, don't overthink the safety element. If you do the simple things we talked about here, then you're going to be fine. Up next is a quick bonus episode of the podcast about how you can secure your home while you're on vacation, so don't miss it. Well, that's everything that I have for the main episode of the Secure Dad podcast for today. Thank you for listening. Get your copy of my family home security assessment today. Follow the link in today's show notes to download and print out your copy. Don't forget to listen to the bonus episode that I have for you all about protecting your home while you're gone on vacation. I'll share with you two failures that happened to me when I was preparing for my last trip. I'm Andy Murphy, and until next time, take care and enjoy your vacation with your family. Thanks for joining me on this special bonus episode of the podcast. I just wanted to take a few moments to share with you what we can all do to secure our homes while we go on vacation. And I'm not going to go over everything. You guys know to lock the doors, arm your alarm, turn on the surveillance system, all that kind of stuff. Plus, I'm also going to share with you two things that went wrong in my preparations for my last vacation. My first tip is that we need to pack discreetly. This means you don't make a big production of loading up the family car for your trip. You never know if the down-on-his-luck roofer across the street is going to see us pack up and leave. Knowing that our house will be empty for a few days may be too tempting for him, and we don't need to make it easy for the bad guys to know that we're gone. We need to pack our car with the garage door down where nobody can see us. 
If you don't have a garage, bring out the stuff a few bags at a time and don't leave it piled up by the car. That way you don't bring too much attention to what you're doing. My journey in starting the Secure Dad has its roots in how my dad prepared our home for vacations. He was a strong believer in using light timers. And in those days, the light timers were these boxes with a dial on them that plugged into an outlet. And to this day, I have no idea how to program one of those things. Thankfully, we don't have to mess with those anymore because we have smart plugs. Smart plugs will turn on lamps and other lights in your home using Wi-Fi on an app on your phone. I have personally had success with Wemo and Amazon plugs, and there are smart switches too, meaning that you can have a wall switch that will turn on your overhead lights just like normal. Some of these smart plugs have apps that are cool enough to actually turn on and off the lights for you, making it look like you're moving from room to room, which I think is really cool. But please, don't go overboard like you might do with your Christmas lights. We're just shooting for our homes to look occupied. We're not trying to set some scene here. Nothing says we're on vacation like packages piling up on the porch and mail spilling out of the mailbox. That's when you have to have your mail held by the Postal Service. If you have purchases coming from Amazon, then pick them up at a UPS store or an Amazon locker or delay the delivery until you get back. On my last vacation, my first failure was that we had a package delivered just after we left for our trip. I could not believe it. So I had to text a trusted neighbor to go get it for me, and they did, which I appreciate. And this leads me to my next point, and also my second failure. Develop good relationships with your neighbors. It is such a load off your mind to know that there are people that you can trust who have a vested interest in the security of your neighborhood, and they're looking out for your house. So the same neighbors who grabbed the package off the porch for me were also leaving for a trip that same week. But their grandson was going to house sit for them and take care of their dog, and they offered for him to keep an eye out on our home too. I appreciate that offer, and that is really, really gracious. But I don't have a trusting relationship with the grandson. He may be the best kid in the world, and I'm sure I've seen him mow their grass, but I don't know what he's into. And he may be a good kid. But if he says something in a conversation to one of his friends, then they're going to know that my house is empty too. And I just can't give away that information. So this leads me to tell you to watch out for who knows that you're gone. People with criminal intent are much more emboldened when they know they won't be met with resistance. Lastly, take this one from me. Snap a picture of your back door, your stove, your front door, any element of your home security that you're going to worry about later. Nothing's worse than sitting on the beach worrying if you locked your back door. If you take a picture on your phone of your security preparations, then you'll know that they're done. Now, I sometimes, I have this anxiety that's a little crazy. I think that sometimes I left our gas stove top lit and that all the burners are on high for some reason. Now, I know this has never happened before and I would never do anything like this, but when you can't confirm that you didn't, In a panic, it can all seem too real. So take that picture. Trust me. Enjoy your summer travels, and with a little work, you don't have to worry about your home security while you're gone. And to help you secure your home even more, check out my new family home security assessment at the link in today's show notes. Be safe out there, and have a good time.